So today we're going to talk all about the Earth. Earth, our home, is the third planet from the Sun. It is the only planet known to have an atmosphere containing free oxygen, oceans of liquid water on its surface, and of course, it supports life. Now about a fifth of the Earth's atmosphere is made up of oxygen, produced by our beautiful plants. Earth is the fifth largest of the planets in the solar system, smaller than the four gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, but larger than the other three rocky planets, Mercury, Mars and of course, Venus. Now the Earth has a diameter of roughly 8,000 miles or 13,000 kilometers and is round because gravity pulls matter into a ball, although it is not perfectly round, instead it's more of an oblate spheroid whose spin causes it to be squashed at its poles and swollen at the equator. Now we move on to the Earth's crust, which is the Earth's hard outer layer. It is less than 1% of the Earth's volume. Now the crust is made up of three different types of rocks, igneous, metamorphic and sedimentary rocks. Below the crust is the mantle. Now the upper part of the mantle is made up of something called peridotite, a rock that is denser than rocks common in the crust. The crust and the upper mantle make up the lithosphere. Now the lithosphere is broken up into tectonic plates that can move. Now the crust is of two different types. One is something we call the continental crust, which basically means under the land, while the other is the oceanic crust, under the ocean. The continental crust is thicker and the oceanic crust is a lot thinner. Now the thickness can vary anywhere between 5 to 80 kilometers. Now the temperature of the crust increases with depth because of something called geothermal energy. Where the crust meets the mantle, the temperatures can be pretty varied, somewhere between 200 degrees Celsius or 392 degrees Fahrenheit, all the way to 400 degrees Celsius or 752 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the crust is the coldest layer because it is exposed to the atmosphere. The Earth's mantle is the 1800 mile or 2900 kilometer thick shell making up about 84% of the Earth's volume. It is over the Earth's iron-rich core, which takes up about another 15% of the Earth's volume. Below the lithosphere is a layer of upper mantle called the asthenosphere. Now this is made up of rock that is fluid and can typically move. It is this fluidity that powers the movement of the tectonic plates of the Earth's crust. Now a large fraction of the Earth's interior, from a depth of about 650 kilometers or 400 miles, down to 2,900 kilometers or 1,800 miles consists of the lower mantle, which is composed chiefly of magnesium and iron-bearing silicates, including the high-pressure equivalents of olivine and pyroxene. The outer core of the Earth is a fluid layer about 2,300 kilometers or 1,400 miles thick and composed of mostly iron and nickel that lies above the Earth's solid inner core and below its mantle. Its outer boundary lies 2,890 kilometers or 1,800 miles beneath the Earth's surface. Now the Earth's inner core is the Earth's innermost part. It is primarily a solid ball with a radius of about 1,220 kilometers or 760 miles, which is about 70% of the Moon's radius. It is composed of an iron-nickel alloy and some light elements. The temperature at the inner core's surface is approximately 5,700 kelvins or 5,430 degrees Celsius, which is about the temperature at the surface of the Sun. Alright, so now let's talk about the oceanic crust, which is that part of the Earth's crust that covers the ocean basins. It consists of dark coloured rocks made up of basalt. This rock is made up of silicon, oxygen and magnesium. The density of the oceanic crust is about 3 grams per cubic centimetre. The continental crust has a lower density. Now this difference in the average densities allows many natural phenomena to occur on and below the surface of the earth. Now the oceanic crust scarcely floats on the mantle. Now the continental crust accounts for 40% of the surface of the earth. It is made up of granite rock which is light in colour. Now this rock is rich in constituents like silicon, aluminium and oxygen. The density of the continental crust is less as compared to the oceanic crust. It has an approximate value of 2.6 grams per cubic centimetre. 
Due to this difference in densities in magma between the oceanic crust and the continental crust, the continents stay in their places, and both crusts are able to float on the magma. The continental crust floats much more freely on the magma. Now, the continental crust is much thicker when compared to the oceanic crust. It has a thickness ranging from 20 miles, which is about 35 kilometers, on the plains, to as much as 40 miles, which is about 70 kilometers, on the very highest mountains around the world.